Since the COVID-19 pandemic started, we have been witnessing the fastest race to develop a vaccine in modern history. And that is because the world wants to achieve herd immunity, a stage where enough people are vaccinated to slow down and stop the spread of COVID-19. To reach herd immunity, 50 to 90% of Africans need to be vaccinated, which is challenging when wealthier nations and regions are trying to do the same thing, but with more financial and political power to secure vaccines. So how will African countries get all the vaccines they need in order to achieve herd immunity? Unlike most nations in the global north, African countries have limited bargaining power to negotiate individually and directly with vaccine manufacturers. That is why most African countries are relying almost entirely on COVAX and the African Union to procure vaccine doses. Both COVAX and the African Union have multilateral initiatives that group countries together to give them collective bargaining power, increasing their chances of securing vaccines. Professor Joachim Osur, I work for AMREF Health Africa as the technical director and also for AMREF International University as the Dean School of Medical Sciences about um, how the procurement is being done for Africa because Africans have not basically ordered for the vaccine. Uh, the Sub-Saharan African countries, maybe South Africa to some extent, but the other countries are basically waiting for the COVAX facility. They have not made their own orders. And so the, the vaccines that are being distributed in most African countries is coming through the COVAX facility, not through a government order. This is how it works. Let's start with COVAX. COVAX is a global initiative co-led by the WHO with a program called AMC. AMC is dedicated to providing 92 low and middle income countries around the world with access to COVID-19 vaccines. And it was established after realizing nations around the world are at a disadvantage and need assistance in the rush to procure vaccines. Using funds received from wealthy nations and other organizations, COVAX is negotiating and purchasing vaccines on behalf of these 92 countries, over 40 of which are African nations. Only 14 African governments are missing out on this program for different reasons. For instance, countries like Tanzania and Madagascar are not part of the program because they do not intend to acquire vaccines and other nations are relying on donations from countries that are invested in vaccine diplomacy. Vaccines from COVAX make up 90% of all the vaccine doses received so far by all African countries. This is why African countries need more options, and this is where the African Union comes into the picture. My name is Nana Kofi Kwache. I'm a Ghanaian studying at the New York University, um, where I'm a research fellow in the Department of, of Health Policy and Management at the School of Global Public Health. So how do you figure out ways to get you know, in the line? And that's where the African Union came up with the African Vaccine Acquisition Task Team, whose job it was to figure out a way to A, come up with the financing mechanism and then a pooling mechanism to get African countries to do their own kind of mini COVAX, where they are figuring out a source of, of, of money where, that they can use when pre purchase vaccines. And they are getting, you know, guaranteed orders from African countries for those vaccines at the same time. I'm always going to have a hard time because you are going there to compete on pricing and on prioritization with countries like Denmark, countries like the United States, who can outbid you on price and who can outmuscle you on prioritization. Together, COVAX and AVAT will theoretically allow African nations to vaccinate precisely 50% of their populations by the end of 2021. And the odds of this happening are slightly improved by the additional vaccine donations being received outside these two programs. But so far, 
African nations have only received enough doses to vaccinate just under 2% of the entire continent's population. And that is from all sources and not just COVAX and AVAD. At this rate, we will only have enough to vaccinate under 30% of the continent by the end of this year. And that's without factoring in the logistics to carry out the actual vaccination. Although, a survey by the African CDC reveals 80% of Africans are willing to take the vaccine. It seems the best way to guarantee that Africa receives enough vaccines for herd immunity is by producing our own. You know, it's, it's late March now and no doses have gone out because of those um, shortages there. So we have the initiative there in concept on paper, but if, if vaccine manufacturers um, are not allowed to share their patents or are not encouraged to share their intellectual property um, through the wave of intellectual property protections to facilities around the world that can produce this, those bottlenecks will continue to create artificial shortages and those artificial shortages will continue to shortchange African people. You know, firms around the world that can manufacture the same vaccines if they knew how, let's say, let's actually confront the reality that the reason why vaccines are in short supply is because we are not sharing the knowledge about how to create them. Because there are companies out there that if they have that knowledge, will be able to, to manufacture, you know, and for institutions and companies that will manufacture the vaccines. You have Louis Pasteur in Senegal. You have in South Africa, H um, firms and agencies and research labs that can do that. Also in Egypt, if all those labs are able to come online and manufacture the vaccines that they are know-how and capacity would allow them to manufacture, a lot of this supply shortage would be eliminated. And if you eliminate the supply shortage, you also obviously solve the pricing question because you begin to create you, you're, you're more or less flooding the market that drives prices down somewhat. Now, if that happens, if that trips waiver were granted, this is the scenario that the world would be facing, where it would speed up the end of the pandemic. It would make vaccine access a lot more equitable for low-income countries, especially like, like the ones in Africa. And it would make it so that we as African peoples would have equal access and equitable access, in fact, to these COVID-19 vaccines on an equitable time frame. So that is brought all the resources together from Africa and developed a center which can manufacture. I mean, India is manufacturing vaccines. If we had a center in Africa, we would manufacture vaccines for Africans. We would collaborate with the big farmer, do the production right here, and then we would not have to run into the problems that we are running into now. But even that, what if Africa put a basket of money together? and purchased vaccines instead of each small country trying to purchase, we would have a better bargaining power. I think the need to come together as Africa and do some things together is so important. But despite the high willingness to vaccinate, Africa still faces the risk of not procuring and deploying vaccination in time, which may lead to us dealing with new variants that complicate the effectiveness or the vaccines we are working so hard to procure. Hi, thanks for watching. We have more African news stories for you and a brand new one each week. Subscribe if you like learning and thinking about Africa.